Good afternoon. Um, I've been seeing that there's um, some talk on a few different videos, people arguing about uh, how to set the uh, vacuum advance on a distributor. Um, I've watched a few videos from uh, Andy on Unity Motorsports. Um, he had a couple of really good videos on it. Um, I watched one or two. I've watched different ones from Uncle Tony. It's been a while, uh, but I did watch them in the past. And they sort of say opposite things. And um, what it seems to me is that um, I tend to do it one way, but I started to ask myself, when would you do the other way? Is ported vacuum only for small control? Um, we know that that's what it was designed and invented for because it's it's dealing with the uh, the addition of EGR and if you have a hot rod engine and you're not doing EGR so you might ask well why do I need ported va vacuum when that's what it's meant to deal with is the small control and um, so I thought I'd go through a few specific examples that I thought of and then I would uh, you know, I would show a couple of occasions where ported vacuum may actually be useful, though it's not going to be as common. Uh, the most common way is going to be um, manifold vacuum because uh, uh, souped up engines tend to want more advanced at idle and really low RPMs. So uh, the first example I'm going to point to is my setup. Uh, the distributor in my car is set this way. I got 14 degrees initial timing. The centrifugal advance in it, it's a Petronics distributor, has 24 degrees, giving it 38 total. And um, the vacuum advance is on the manifold. So what you get is that at idle, it's actually advanced maybe 30 degrees, 31 degrees, because the vacuum advance is, is kicking in already. And... Um, I think that's appropriate most of the time. I mean, you're looking at an engine where compression was raised a little bit, nine and three quarters. It has sort of a middle of the road, you know, cam. It's 228 at 50. Um, so that setup, I think, works great for the majority of, of uh, hot rod engines out there. Maybe not those specific settings, but hooking your vac advance to the manifold. I also recommend an adjustable vacuum advance canister. Mine has that. Um, obviously the car is not done, so I haven't road tested it yet, but when I do, I will likely adjust it. Um, another thing is sometimes people have these old distributors and, uh, you know, like I've seen in like Uncle Tony's show, you know, working with this old stuff is fun. And it is. If you, you know, you have the patience for when things go wrong. But in here, you know, you have, this thing has points. I believe this is an old Oldsmobile distributor, a spare one I have. It has a points ignition. Um, it has the vacuum advance here. And underneath you have your centrifugal advance. Now, a couple things people do with them, and this is leading to where you, you might do these other way, is um, you could lock out this distributor. Okay, um, that's an old school way that I don't recommend. I'm not going to do it in any of my cars, but people do it. So if you put this in locked out at 36 degrees, um, that means you have 36 degrees at idle. And so that's a lot of, that's a lot at idle already. I would not plug in to manifold vacuum in that case. I would change out this canister for an adjustable canister and I'd put vacuum advance on ported and I'd start doing road tests to see how much vacuum advance it would take. And so if you have an old hot rod that's already been modified in this way, that would be a way to go to uh, get, get it to work halfway decent. Um, another thing that commonly happens is more common than locking them out as people will recurve these distributors. They'll change the advanced springs. Sometimes people limit the centrifugal advance. Like um, in this edition, this uh, example, I said 14 degrees centrifugal. I just reversed that. That's a number that you could reach by limiting the, me the mechanism in this distributor. So you'd say, okay, 
now we we're running 24 initial and 14 centrifugal for a total of 38 because i'm assuming i'm doing these thought process all on my engine and that's where i would put it if i did that now that one i would also put the vacuum advance on ported um unless you had a the canister adjusted way down but why would you do that because then it would be way down when you're driving it and defeats the purpose of the vac advance so that's another case where you might do ported and you might ask well why would you have your ignition set this way that would be a good way to set your ignition if your engine is over cammed you know if you uh maybe you're just doing a rat rod and you put a you swapped out the cam for the sound okay so you have eight to one compression it's a good wrench motor you put a big cam in it for the sound but now it's lazy on the low end because it's too much cam. Well, if you did that, that would bring back some of your torque. And also with the vac advance on ported, it probably wouldn't spark knock and you could adjust it to drive pretty good. Um, so that's another example of where you would use ported vacuum, you know, in one of your hot rods. So to me, the reality is, um, when Andy from Motorsports says to do it on the manifold, he is absolutely right. And for him to say, uh, I get skeptical whenever somebody says always. The word always, there's an old adage that always never happens. Um, most of the time, because he's talking about engines that are built properly. <laughs> he's talking about engines with parts matched up properly and about things done in more contemporary ways. But if you're doing a nostalgia thing and you want to do everything the old way, you know, uh, because you're more for show and, and stuff like that, you might end up doing it this way to get it to run good with, with your old school distributor setup. So the answer to me is 99% of people are going to want to put the back advance on the manifold when they're, with their hot rod. But there are one percenters who want to do things old school ways, want to do things the nostalgia way, or maybe you bought a, maybe you bought somebody else's hot rod and that's how it already is. And so you just want to tune the thing. So that's my answer rather than saying this guy's right and that guy's wrong. Is it? Yeah, mostly this, sometimes one of these. That's, that's the answer I have. All right. Um, take it easy, folks. Good luck with your projects.